Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get started on investing in mutual funds. Whether you are a non-resident Indian or resident Indian, I'm going to show you few simple steps how you can get started on this process. I'll start with the basic terminology you should be aware of. Then I'm going to be showing uh, the different options available to you to invest in mutual funds. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how you can get started on this process online with a few simple steps. I'm going to be also talking about uh, the taxation for residents and non-residents. For NRIs, I will also be talking about uh, what you need to do when your residential change status changes between resident and non-resident. If you live in USA and Canada, you need to know a few things. I'm going to be cover that, covering that as well. Let's start with knowing the basics. First is AMC, Asset Management Company. These are the entities that float mutual funds for investors to purchase. At a basic level, there are three types of funds available. Uh, equity funds, uh, debt funds, hybrid funds. Equity funds, money is only invested in equity-oriented instruments. Debt funds, uh, the money is invested into debt-oriented instruments. And a hybrid fund, money is invested into both equity as well as debt in, in, in ratios. So for every mutual fund plan, there is always typically uh, be two options available for customers to pick. One is a dividend option, other one is a growth option. Dividend op option, if you choose, you will, when the asset grows, you will be getting dividends periodically. Uh, even, even though it's not uh, mandatory, uh, typically dividend options pay dividends. For a growth option, if you choose, you don't get money periodically. Rather, whenever you sell the units, you will be, uh, you will be getting the um, uh, growth uh, value. The next one is a folio number. Um, when you open an account with AMCs like HDFC mutual fund or UTI mutual fund, uh, before you can purchase a units, you have to create a folio number. You can think of folio numbers as a equivalent to bank accounts. So if you think AMCs as a banks like uh, HDFC, SBI, you can think of folio numbers as bank accounts. Um, typically in your bank account, um, uh, it will tell the ac under account, your account number, it will tell how much uh, money you have kept. So similarly, under the folio number, uh, when you create a folio number, uh, you will have to provide your PAN number, uh, your uh, bank account, where the money has to be deducted when you purchase a, purchase a mutual fund, uh, where the money has to go when you sell a mutual fund, all those informations will be kept in a folio, folio number. Under folio number, uh, you will also see what kind of mutual funds you hold and uh, what kind of mutual funds you have sold, all the transaction history, everything you can see. Um, typically, you can add, uh, typically people add one uh, bank account under a folio number, but uh, some fund houses accept as, as high as uh, five bank accounts. Uh, if you have a joint account or, or, or a partnership deed, you can you can attach uh, 10 bank accounts. So you can choose from out of those different accounts. You can say, um, I, I, I want to uh, pull money from this particular account for purchasing mutual fund, right? So that's 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 for, for your number. Um, anytime you open an account with these AMCs, right? Before even to create a folio number, you have to be KYC compliant. What this means is every financial institution um, has to know their customers better for which whenever you open a bank account or this mutual fund account um, uh, you have to provide your id proof address proof all those things so that they, they know their customers better uh, what customers profile is right um, th this this thing can be done online these days so you have to have kyc compliant before even uh, opening any any financial uh, account for that matter um, the next one is the FATCA. FATCA is a Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. This is specific to NRIs living in USA and Canada. So basically what this means is uh, Indian government and US government, they, they, they got into an agreement, right, where Indian government agreed to share uh, investors information with, uh, with the US government uh, if a given investor is a resident of uh, USA, right? Um, so when the, during the when you declare FATCA in that application form, you have to provide a SSN number, 
and uh, your address and there are there are various different informations are available so typically if you open a nre account or nro account or any mutual fund account these days uh, you have to get the fatca declaration done uh, at the at the time of account opening but if you open an account in the past say five six years ago these institutions must have contacted you to uh, get the declaration done if it is not um, it's it's better you 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 have to get it done uh, as soon as possible there are three main ways you can get started on investing in mutual funds the first one is directly contacting the amcs to get started on investing um, this can be done either walking into their office or online um, you may need multiple accounts when i say multiple accounts um, if you let's say you like uh, hdfc balance fund and uh, uti opportunities fund in this case in this case you have to contact uti as well as hdfc you need to open accounts with these two different companies and you have to you know maintain these different accounts um, but the advantage here is by contacting the amcs directly you may save on commissions because when you directly purchase plans from these companies you will be getting direct plans uh, when i say direct plans every mutual fund will have direct as well as regular plans for a same mutual fund for example ut opportunities fund you will have ut opportunities direct ut opportunities regular uh, when you contact amcs you will typ typically be buying uh, direct where you will save say 0.1 to 0.5 percentage uh, uh, co commission because you are directly buying from these amcs the second way is you can go through the brokerages uh, say for example if you have a trading account for example icici direct or hdfc they provide a one-stop shop experience where you just have your brokerage account where they will do all the paperwork and behind the scenes they will purchase the mutual funds uh, that you are interested in um, this way you in the single dashboard you can look at track all your mutual funds uh, but that comes with a small price that these uh, interfaces typically do not offer direct plans you you will be buying regular plans where every year uh, you may be paying a little bit uh, more than the direct plans but these days uh, i have seen some of these uh, interfaces allow direct funds as well the third option is going through a agent um, this could be a agent sitting in your you know small city somewhere right uh, they do the manual work the most of the times this is uh, this is manual uh, nowadays you know they are getting interfaces and they, they just you know get into their, their dashboard and then do the paperwork for you and purchase mutual fund on your behalf and then print it and give it to you um, there is a small commission again involved because these are the agents but for their service they need to be charging the way they get money is through by selling uh, you the regular funds where they get the little bit commission let's see how you can get started online directly with an amc right um, before you get started right uh, you need to keep few things ready one is the pan number um, if you are a resident uh, indian you need to have other for a non-resident you don't need other uh, card um, you need to have your bank account ready and you should be able to connect your bank online um, uh, if you are a non-resident uh, you cannot have regular uh, resident savings account you have to have nre or nro to start with um, uh, both resident indians and non-resident indians you need to be kyc compliant if you have already opened a bank account kyc compliant must have been already done uh, if it is not these days you can do it online for example when i got started on uti it was pretty simple process uh, you can get your kyc compliant done um, very quickly um, once you have uh, these basic pan card other card and then bank account numbers then you can go to their amc website for example uti or hdfc or aditya birla mutual right um, typically these guys take your pan card as the number and then they figure out if the if you already have a folio or not if if you do not have any existing folios they will happy to you know uh, set up account very quickly online within minutes once you have an account set up right they will check whether you are a kvc compliant if not they will offer you to complete the kvc process online uh, once you complete the kvc process 
you, they will let you create a folio to what it means to create a folio you need to have your a bank account ready and you need to provide your pan card uh, number right mm -hmm. they will do online verification and then set up uh, the folio quickly uh, for if you are a, if you are NRI living in USA um, you need to also get additional step done apart from the KYC compliance they will also verify whether you are a FATCA compliant you need to complete your FATCA declaration right uh, UTA for example um, they made it out this FATCA declaration available online so it you, you can you can just quickly get it done or, or if you have recently opened an NRE and an RO account, you must have already been FATCA compliant. So these days, banks make it mandatory. Uh, if you have not done FATCA compliant in the past, uh, the, the in financial institutions must have contacted you to get this done. Uh, if not, you better be done with this as soon as possible. Let's take a look at how the taxation works. Um, when I got started on UTI mutual fund, they sent me tax ready recorder. I am reusing that information here. You can find this on their website to take a closer look. Uh, basically, you can make money out of a mutual fund in two ways. One, uh, through dividends. Second, capital appre appre appreciation. Uh, when you subscribe to a dividend plan, you will be getting dividends typically uh, periodically, even though that's not mandatory. Uh, but you typically should be getting a dividend. Um, so AMCs are not dealing with the dividend transaction taxes anymore. So you are not going to be uh, paying any taxes upfront with uh, AMCs. For all the dividends you get, you will be getting the full amount from the AMCs. But you as an investor need to compute how much money you have received uh, um, as a dividend and then pay taxes accordingly. Uh, for equity oriented schemes, you have to pay 11.64% if you are a in resident Indian or non-resident Indian, it doesn't matter. Um, if uh, you are getting dividend out of a non-equity oriented schemes, uh, you have to pay 29.12% um, if you are an Indian or non-resident Indian, it doesn't matter. When you sell a mutual fund um, for a higher price than you purchased, you got a capital appreciation there, right? For which, depending upon how long you held the mutual fund, you have to pay either short-term capital gains or long-term capital gains. The, the definition between short-term and long-term is different whether you are selling an equity-oriented scheme or a non-equity-oriented scheme. As you can see, um, the short-term capital gain limit is 12 months for equity-oriented schemes and, and for non-equity-oriented scheme, it is 36 months. So if you have sold a equity oriented scheme less than 12 months of your purchase, you have to pay 15.6% both resident Indian and non-resident Indians. For a non-equity oriented scheme, if you sold within 36 months, um, you have to pay 31.20% um, um, taxes. So similarly, um, if you have sold an equity oriented scheme after uh, 12 months of uh, purchase, you have to pay 10.40% um, as tax. For a non-equity oriented scheme, if you have sold after 36 months of, months of purchase, you have to pay 20.80% as tax. There are a few things to note if you are an NRI. Uh, when your residential status changes between resident Indian to non-resident Indian or vice versa, uh, you you will want to get your folios updated as soon as possible um, so that uh, you can avoid the tax implications uh, coming out of it. Uh, if you live in USA and Canada specifically, uh, as I mentioned, FATCA compliant is must. Uh, if you have recently created a bank account, a NRE account or NRO account, you must have been already FATCA compliant. In that case, getting started on mutual fund is going to be you know breeze. Uh, if not, it's it's going to take what you know maybe 10-15 minutes more uh, to get started on this. Other important point you need to note here is that not all AMCs uh, accept applications from uh, NRIs living in USA and Canada. When I looked at it a few months back, um, there were only few fund houses like Birla Sun Life, SBI Mutual, UTI Mutual, ICICI Prudential. 
and uh, and um, L and T. Uh, these companies were accepting applications from uh, U.S. based NRIs. But another thing to note here is not all AMCs allow U.S. investors to start online. The only fund house I found back that time was UTI, um, where they were allowing NRIs living in USA and Canada to start an application online. Um, other fund houses were not allowing that point in time, but things are changing. Um, it it might, might be different now. Um, again, I'm not a tax advisor here. It's better for you to connect with, with your tax advisors so that you can be most current on the tax rules depending upon the country you are living in. Um, uh, and also you want to be more accurate when you are reporting your taxes uh, for the country where you live in as well as India. Happy investing. So there you have it folks. If you like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment and share. Thank you so much.